Today we're going to spend an hour creating this beautiful abstract painting which is totally stress-free, relaxing and above all, ideal project to do with kids. Can't go wrong. It's a long video so get a cuppa and sit back and relax while we paint and create a beautiful picture with absolutely no chance of failure. Don't forget to like, subscribe and consider membership of our channel or think about joining us on Patreon. So now let's get started. And so here we go. Now, this is going to be, I don't know if you remember a little while ago, we did some circles and we embellished them and they were quite fun. Well, this is, I haven't tried this technique before, but what I'm going to do is I'm thinking of the neurographic lines and I'm going to put some neurographic lines on this piece of paper, just a few, and then I'm going to do circles over the top because And then maybe we'll do one this way. Okay, because, and the reason is, we are going to paint circles again, and we're going to be thinking planets. We're not thinking anything more complicated than that. We're just thinking, going to think planets. So let's get started, as they say in all the best videos. Okay, so let's see. Um, might be worth thinking about starting with the lightest colours first. So I'm using just an ordinary round brush. This is where you should have music playing in the background and you're just going to pick up colours and just put them in let them blend, see what happens. Don't be in any way prescriptive about what you're doing. And whatever color attracts you, do that one. Whatever your favorite colors are, do them. And you can put them anywhere. See what happens when you let them dilute a bit, when you add white perhaps take perhaps the colour from the previous one that you did and introduce that to the next one and see what kinds of wonderful um, colour blends and so on you can get. So if I go down to a little bit more white here, this is the mixture of all those colours. And now I can probably bring in blue. It's quite fun using white because you get um, some beautiful shades, some beautiful uh, gradations of colour. And Just keep painting. Just enjoy getting the paint onto the paper, seeing what happens. Don't be afraid to make a mess on your palette because it's washable. Don't do that though, what I've done there, which is to paint two the same size. So we'll make this one bigger. This is the blue earth. And the reason for the lines is because they sort of indicate the rotation of planets if you see what I mean. And I'm going to probably make this one a little bit bigger because I'm going to imagine that in this solar system that I'm painting, which isn't ours, there's a sun and there's in fact a twin sun. There are two. There's the big golden sun, this one, and next to it there's a small red sun. That is a very uh, vibrant pink, which I might want to 
modify a little bit. So we'll put some beautiful purple. And I'm painting it with not too much water so that I'm getting this broken line effect, which is something that you use often if you're painting a picture and you want, um, I put pink in the middle, and you want to convey the idea of light reflecting on water, for example. Okay, so now I have got, I've just added a little bit of turquoise to that color and we've got this rather nice mauve. And I think I might put a little bit of blue around the outside edge of that. And bring this blue down here to that purple and perhaps add a bit more pink. I put one up here. And then I'm thinking, going to be bold and put orange in there. And you'll learn such a lot from doing this because you'll learn things like orange and purple makes brown or gray. And you'll say to yourself, oh, I don't know if I really like that. But, you know, whatever. So you could put some pink in there to sort of affect it. You could put some white or blue in the middle to also affect it. And we'll see what happens there. Okay, so I'm going to do one here, which is a pale green. And then now I've realised I don't have green on this palette, so we'll have to mix it up. If you put water in a circle around the outside of one of these um, rings, you'll get an outward bleeding, which is quite fun. I might do that to this one too. It looks like sunspots or something like that. And you can take that quite a long way out, but I think that'll do. I'd be surprised to see what happens with that when that dries. I'm just using one paint brush. I'm not going to bother with more than one. Um, but I'm feeling the need for a nice clean green. So I'm going to be looking at my other paints. Maybe I'll be, you know, branch out into modern science and let's use some of this Daniel Smith green. Could use a little bit of that. A bit of purple in the middle. Let that do what it wants to do. And maybe we need some orange. Let's put a nice big orange one over here. With perhaps red in the middle. And sometimes you mix two colors together and you think, no, I'm not going to put that sludge on there. Um, okay, let's have another yellow one here. And blue, yellow and blue, have we done that yet? No, we haven't. Yellow and blue, which makes green, and then a bit more blue on the outside. I'm going to have to make this one quite big and quite dark. Using gouache can be intimidating the first time you use it. I know, I remember the first time I did, I thought the world had ended. I didn't know what to do with it. It dries with a kind of chalky um, surface to it, which is really rather nice. Um, But if you try it out on something like this, 
<clears throat> absolutely nothing to worry about. And you can get the feel of it. And if you've got something like this green from Daniel Smith Primatech, you can add gouache to it and then you'll get a more opaque colour like that, which I think is better for this particular exercise than having them Uh, not not opaque. I think the opacity is very interesting for this kind of exercise. But if you haven't got a whole bunch of colours in gouache, really all you need is white. Because as I've just shown you, you just add, <clears throat> add the white gouache to the non-gouache colour and you get a opaque colour like that. So to be honest, all you really need, you don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of tubes. I don't have any tubes of opaque colour. You just need to mix it with, with gouache. Uh, Winsor & Newton do an inexpensive white designer's gouache, they call it. which you should have a tube of anyway, because that's often, when you're doing <coughs> a watercolour, that's often a colour that you need to uh, put back in the lights. You can use, um, you can use, um, what do you call it? Um, PH Martin bleed proof white as well, but the white gouache is perfectly acceptable for that. I think we might want to make this one here a little bit darker. And I'm going to put in some more blue ones now. And when I feel as if I've Put enough of these on the page. We'll stop, let it dry, then come back in and do the wonderful embellishments. Which I think should work quite well. on this paint. They should show up really well. I would honestly recommend that you give gouache a try. It is interesting, it's fun. And, you know, when I'm doing this, I don't look at the overall picture at all. When I'm doing this kind of relaxing thing, I don't look at it and say, oh, what should I put here? What should I put there? I just paint. And um, sometimes it's not as pleasing as I might have wanted it to be. But you can always rescue your painting. You don't have to ever think it's failed. Just, just keep working on it. Like the old masters used to with their oils, you know, or anyone does nowadays if they paint in oil or acrylic, you never give up, you just keep going until you get it to a point where you feel happy with it. There might come a time when you think, oh, that wasn't the biggest success I've ever had or ever, whatever, but that's not the point of doing what we're doing today because this is a warm up. It's an exploration of mediums and methods and techniques and it's just something <clears throat> to cheer you up if you're feeling a bit miserable, like we often do. Isn't it funny how sometimes you wake up in the morning and you, you wonder why you're alive? Sometimes in my case I wonder if I'm alive. Um, 
you have to kind of pull yourself out of a bit of a rut. As we get older, it's it harder and harder. But some things get easier, like for example, not having to wear makeup anymore. That's one of the best things about getting older, I think. I'm sure not everyone is the same as me, but I actually found that my skin didn't much like the sorts of things I used to put on it. So I gave up makeup. Okay, but totally gave it up when the pandemic started because, I mean, no one can see your face anyway. I know that people say, oh, well, you need more eye makeup and all the rest of it, but... Not me. Okay, getting towards the end. I'm going to have to stop in a minute because I'm starving. If you can hear my tummy rumbling, I wouldn't be surprised. Most of that noise in the background is the air conditioning, but there is a certain amount of tummy rumbling going on. keep trying to mix green with orange and it really doesn't work. It is not acceptable. Okay, let's try this pink up here. This is um, Daniel Smith. I can't remember, it's alizarin crimson or something mixed with mixed with white gouache. So there we are. I'm going to let that dry and then we will come back after lunch and do the next phase. Okay, so this is all nice and dry now. And um, I've added a few smaller circles here in some of the spaces just to fill up some of those gaps. And the next thing that I'm going to do is some spatter. So I've got three brushes here, which you can use to do spatter with. Uh, this one is a sword liner. That's quite a specialised sort of brush, but you can buy those easily enough online. Um, I'll put a link to one of those in my Amazon storefront and in the blog, probably, that goes with this. Um, this is a toothbrush, not a, not a currently used one, uh, but this is my favourite one for doing finer spatter. This will do big blobbies and this will do finer spatters. And this, if you haven't, well, you're bound to have a toothbrush, of course, but if you don't have one of those, you might have one of these, which is, um, what do we call it? We call it a rigger, or it's a long-haired, um, fairly small size round brush. Or if worse comes to worse, just use any old paintbrush. You need a fair amount of water to make it work. So I'm going to do a little bit um, of each of these brushes here. And first of all, we need to mix up some paint. So going to use my little palette here, which has got uh, ordinary watercolour paint in it, because that will probably fall off the brush a bit more easily than the gouache. But that's not an absolutely essential thing, and it might not even be true, but I'm guessing that that's a possibility. I'm going to mix up some purple, something fairly dark, dark blue, anyway. And you can do this one of two ways, the spatters. You can either hold the brush like this, with your forefinger on there and you can go like that or you can take the brush the brush like this and tap it from the other direction and if you tap it this way you'll tend to get sprays going that way if you tap it this way you'll tend to get sprays going directly down so you can control to a certain extent where the spatter goes when i say to a certain extent 
you know, don't, uh, don't get too excited about how much you can control it because it will be fairly random. So that's that brush in use. Now, this one, the script liner, uh, we'll do the same thing, but maybe I'll pick up some something a bit more on the red side. And we'll just do some nice wet blobs with this because this is a much more blobby kind of effect. And same thing, you can go like that, or you can go like that. And we've got some bigger blobs there. I don't want to go too bonkers because we don't want too much in the way of spray on here. But I just wanted to show you the three different options. Now I'm going to use the toothbrush and I think I'll go back to the blue because that's a little bit recessive. It tends to go into the distance. So you just rub some paint onto the brush like that with, you know, it doesn't have to be quite so runny for the toothbrush. And then this you can direct. So we'll go into the center of this one, for example, and we'll just put some fine spatter onto some of these. That one you can see pretty well, and that one, for example. And again, you don't want to go mad because, you know, a little goes a long way when it comes to spatter. And this, of course, is an absolutely optional step. You don't have to do that at all. So, but anyway, I've done it. And so I'll put those away. Now, the next thing I want to do is to start with some darkening of the lines around the outsides of the circles. So we'll take some dark blue and to make that dark blue darker, we'll add some black. So that gives us a really, really dark blue. And the idea is, I think the best thing to do is to just take that dark line and go around one side of the circle to give it some what you might call three-dimensionality. You can also make them a little bit bigger in this process by and evening out the edges a little bit like that if you want. So that's that's that like this one for example we can make it a little bit more symmetrical if we make it a little bit more uh, bigger on one side than on the other. You don't have to do that. You can go completely for absolutely misshapen circles. Mine are pretty misshapen. I think you'd probably agree. Anyway, but that's not the reason why we're doing it, is it? Um, and then there may be a narrow line on that one. They don't have to join up properly when they get to the edge either. You can let them and then another thing that you can do with this paint, you can take your brush and you can do spirals in paint, which you could then later embellish with pen. So you can do that. Um, all right, so that's the blue. You could put a contrasting color on some of them as well. I've got a nice dark brown here. This is a fantastic way to spend an afternoon, especially if we've got the kids, the grandkids. What can we do? Can I do some painting, Nanny? Um, yes. So you get out your paints and you do this. And the kids will love it, I'm sure. So on these ones that have got a slightly reddish tone, you can put this very dark brown, which is nice. If it's not quite dark enough for your liking, you can add some black to it, makes it go darker. And I, th I think um, gouache is perfect for children because it gives such vibrant colors and when it dries, it doesn't really fade down. It can often be disappointing for children when um, the color that they put on the paper just kind of vanishes because watercolor always always dries lighter than it is when you put it on the paper. But gouache, if it's good quality gouache, like this one, which I think is um, De La Rowney, this one, if it's good quality, it won't do that. It will dry the same color, more or less, as it was when you put it on the paper. Um, now we need some purpley pink, some pinky purple, some uh, some of this. 
for some of these ones. You know, as a teacher, I can't resist mentioning how good this kind of an exercise is for children's fine motor skill development to help them to control a brush or a pencil. They have to develop the muscles. They need to do something other than just swiping a screen if they're ever going to have a life. And it's true. So many things in life do not depend on your skill at playing Minecraft, whether they like it or not. I've just been reading an article on uh, uh, some website about children, children's development. I, I was a, as you know, teacher, and my degree is in psychology, child psychology development, and so on and so forth, all that stuff. So I'm interested in these things and it breaks my heart to see grown adults holding a pen or a pencil like a five-year-old. It's not right. So grannies and grannies out, grannies and grandpas out there, please encourage your grandchildren to hold a pen properly. They'll thank you for it one day when they don't get arthritis in their hands at the age of 30. Like my, well, like people I know. Well, I don't really know anyone that's got that, but I'm sure it happens. But then I don't know many people, actually. So it's all hearsay. So you can carry on like this as long as you like, putting circles in the middle to give uh, depth and so on and so forth. This one's looking a bit lonely up here. It's very plain. You'll notice when you put a colour on top of another colour that it seems different from when you put it on top of a different colour because even though these are fairly opaque, the underneath colour does show through to a certain extent. And then we want to put some edging around these yellow ones. So we've got a couple of choices. We could do some orange. So like this. Or you could do green, couldn't you? So I'm a bit short on greens here, so I'm going to have to mix it. So we'll take some blue. I'm going to wash my brush off wastefully and pick up the yellow because otherwise and like I said before, this particular set of paints produces what you might call a slightly sludgy green. It's not what you'd call a vibrant green, but that will do. A little bit of subtlety never did anyone any harm. And put a little bit of that there. And then if I were you, what I would do at this point is to sort of take a look at the whole thing and see whether there's any areas that you feel could really benefit from another circle. And I think... Here is a good example, so I'll just do another one there. And you might want to let it dry a bit at this point, but we can start now embellishing. So if you've got a set of these, this uh, Starry Colours by Kuro Taki, you can activate them, give them a good beating with your less than best brush. Get some of that going. There's lots of different kinds of this around, but this one's pretty good. You can get this stuff in jars as well, but it's quite nice to use it in these um, palettes. So then we'll just come in and Put in some gold, some fat gold lines. And we've got all sorts of things that we can do. We could do some spatter here too of this if you wanted to, make it a little bit wetter. If you feel a bit of spatter might not go amiss. I'll do that. 
You'd be surprised how these little details all add up. And then maybe we'll do one or two more fat lines, but then I might switch to a smaller brush perhaps. And remember, we're not actually trying to achieve anything here except some enjoyment. And wherever you feel that you'd like to put some gold, we can put some gold. zigzag lines and dots and we can have spirals this one wants a spiral all the way around I think And uh, there it is. I'll move this over here. It's not in the wrong place. We could do some blobs like that, which look a bit like leaves. We could have one in the center, circle, like that. We could put some dots in the middle of this one, like this. And maybe we'll go around the outside edge as well, like that. Gold looks particularly good with this magenta colour. Change to one of the slightly more silvery Kiritaki colours. Just lighten the gold up a little bit. I don't think that's quite as good because it's a little bit uh, transparent, so perhaps we won't do that. If you haven't got these paints, you could use a gold pen if you've got one of those. And in a minute, we're going to use a white pen. on the ones that we haven't done anything to. Some gold around the outside edge. Like I said, when you're doing this, don't, my suggestion would be don't look at the whole thing, just look at an individual um, circle and just paint it. Don't try to think, oh, I don't know, this isn't going to work or anything like that. Just don't beat yourself up like that. This is supposed to be fun and relax about it and just enjoy putting the paint on the paper and learning something about how it flows and how it goes. Okay, now I shall stop there for a second and just now I will evaluate where I'm at and I say to myself, okay, even though I've washed out my brush, 
I'm still going to go up there with some more gold and just go around that nice blue one there. That blue planet looks like Earth. All these other planets are a lot busier than, than planet Earth, aren't they? Gosh, it's getting hot in here. I think we need to put the AC on. Okay, so a uh, white pen is over here. I've got a Uniball Signo broad white ink pen, opaque. And this is very useful and nice and has a very good white line. The tip about this that I mentioned the other day is not to press hard. You get it started on a piece of paper somewhere. And then when you use it, you don't press hard. You just press hardly at all. And then your line will come out perfectly like that. If you press harder, you get a lighter line. It's quite strange. So it's best to do that. Okay, so I'll just go around, for example, here, like that. And now we're going to just carry on doing lots of lines, taking our time. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do. So, for example, with these ones, you might, remembering not to press too hard, you might do make them like a waffle. You might go around like this. That's what happens when you press too hard. You get this double line like that, which doesn't really matter. I think probably what I need to do is clean the, the nib. And we can do, like I said, parallel lines. We can do rays coming out like this from the center. You can do spirals. You can do little groups of um, squiggly lines. So just squiggles like this. You can do dots. And do triangles. More. Oh, I like the spirals, don't you? You can do wavy lines like this. And you just go on and on and on until you've got as many lines and dots and designs and this is and that's as you want on there. And then you could. Going back to your original cosmic lines, you could go around and put some little black dots on there, especially where you had a join, which would give a kind of space age sort of, well, very slightly. I don't know if any of you who are watching this video have tried the neurographic um, drawing idea, which is designed to help people relax. And I, uh, I think it's, it's great because for me anyway, I've tried to adapt it to what I feel comfortable with rather than worrying about following their rules exactly. I'm not a great rules person. Um, and I think it's probably improved my ability to let go when I'm painting. So that can't be a bad thing. And it's given me a few ideas of things that we can do. So that's definitely not a bad thing. So there we are. So that's what we've got so far. Um, 
then we can obviously put in, like we did with the white pen, you can put in some lines, radial lines like this. You could put outlines of leaves like that if you wanted to. I'm just, you know, trying to go through the different ideas that you will find if you check online. There's lots of people doing this kind of design. Um, this one seems to be a bit large and lonely, so I'm, what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to go round and round. And like I say, don't think too hard about what you're doing and uh, it'll work out the best. This is a gold pen like the white one and you can come in and fill in between the lines with gold easier than you can with the, uh, with the starry colours if you want to do gold. This is great for putting little gold flowers and little gold leaves and things on your paintings when you do your whimsical birds and that. Maybe we'll do some dots here. Some little circles. That's a good idea. As you go along, you'll want to sort of branch out and do all sorts of things. You could go around the outside edge of these blobs if you wanted to. This one's making me think of chocolate for some reason. I've already had my ration of chocolate today. And we can do some more rounds like that. This could go on forever. And when you add the black or the white, it transforms the whole thing. It's just quite remarkable. And you will find that you develop your imagination. You will. You will develop your ability to see color, color relationships, mix colors, have more confidence in what you're doing, believe that what you're doing is gonna work out, in other words. Know that you can always go further, which will sometimes lead you to a place where you say, yes, actually, that painting turned out, even though I thought it was never going to. If you're a kind of symmetrical person, you'll tend to do things like that and, you know, have your narrow rays there, three sets, and then you balance it out. But if you're a, a non-symmetrical person, you'll tend to just have your rays coming out like that and then you won't have any more, you'll just have those. And then over here, maybe you might decide to have a couple of leaves 
And something we haven't done yet, and I think I'm going to do that in black, is to put, and I think the paint is not quite dry there, but that's okay because look, we've got a really nice scratchy effect there, which actually is really cool. I wonder if I can get the same thing on this one. Uh, not really, but anyway. So we'll go over that one in white, which will give us a bit more of a random effect. Yeah, so there we are. If you do it to, into um, paint that's not quite dry, you might find that you get a really interesting result. And if you do something like that, that looks like the seeds inside a cucumber. Doesn't it? So I have to do that more than once because that's rather good. Put that one over here too. And then we'll put little circles here. We'll go around the outside of that one. What I um, did before I started this, I made a list of all the different kinds of shapes that uh, you could use to do this so that I could refer to it as I was going along. So I've got a list that says um, circles, radial lines, dots, dots in circles, dots in groups, rings which are concentric, so like these ones here, uh, parallel lines, widely spaced rays like uh, these ones, closely spaced rays like those ones, lots of spirals, squealy lines and scallops. I'd forgotten about the scallops, so we put some scallops up here. There we go, scallops. And I think we're getting close to the end of the tape. Remember those days when we used to have to stop recording before we ran out of tape on the tape recorder? My goodness, and now we can just go on ad infinitum, talking endlessly into the void. Everything, every word, everything that's uttered or recorded is going into the annals of history and will be there forever and ever. Does anyone ever think about what it will be like a thousand years from now when our descendants, should the planet live that long, go back and listen to the daft things that I'm saying to you lot on YouTube. Hmm. Or, more to the point, when they actually look at what happened in the world and all the daft things that we did. Hmm. Yes. Right, I'm going to stop now. I think that's probably quite enough. You could add some more spatter if you wanted. You can keep on embellishing until you run out of ink. But I think that's a very fine way to spend an afternoon with the children and uh, start off with the, remember, start off with the lines to break the paper so that you're not afraid of spoiling it. Just spoil it with a couple of space lines like that. And then 
put your planets in. And there we are. We have a wonderful imaginary world where all the planets are happy, gay and bright. So I will let you go now. Have fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.